welcome. Well, let's get right into the video. My name is Trey. This is What Can I Change? You know the business. Okay, so we're going to get straight to this. Um, now, I believe this is not a newer video, but it is a video I do want to talk about and get y'all's opinion on. Um, so let's talk about it. Let's get it. Scott Nugent, trans man, lesbian, mother of three, accidental hero of uh, What is a Woman by Matt Walsh. Nothing transphobic about that movie, and I agree with Elon. Everybody needs to watch it. Not <laughs> bigotry, just facts. So recently, the queer society, the new LGBTQ, has added a new letter, and that letter is A, which stands for autism. Autism now has been, uh, <laughs> has been added to the Q, and you have to ask yourself why. Why is that? So real quickly, not not going to be a real long. I want to say this just to start. This is a longer video. I'm gonna try to do my best to commentate as much as possible. But if I keep, y'all know I'm bad about pausing videos. I'm gonna try my best. But I do want to give one thing. One thing. Here's my opinion. I've already seen the whole video. But before I even saw this video, if you had just told me they added autism. I would have told y'all what I told y'all earlier. They want to add everything and anything to the LGBT. Anything and everything. If you like cats, they're going to add cat lover to the LGBT. They want to run everything. They just want to say, if you are not straight, white, and a male, you are part of the LGBT. They'll put white women in there. They'll put black people as a whole in there. As y'all saw, we were part of the, um, the LGBT flag. They put Black Lives Matter in there. I mean, they put everybody and anybody. As long as you ain't white straight in a male you can be part of the lgbt they just want to get all of us to pretty much be part of their little cult little thing and make us conform to whatever they say to eventually and i say it i think eventually to get to our children and then once they got our children oh society will break down after that long video uh i'm gonna break down why the lgbtq plus is so interested in autistic kids. Now, one in 36 children that are autistic will consider themselves transgender and in need of medical transition, as most kids kicking and screaming, asking their parents to please, please medically transition me, give me puberty blockers, all that kind of stuff. Um, and there is a very, very specific reason to why that is. The majority of children, like myself, that claim to be transgender or born in the wrong body have what's called comorbidities. Some people don't like comorbidities, so I like to say commonalities. And those commonalities are uh, same-sex attracted, autism. Uh, they are mentally gifted, mentally ill. Uh, they are people from abused or children from abused backgrounds. So they're all the children that don't quite fit in in a time. I do like how they mentioned from an abused background. People don't like to mention that, but a lot of people who are trans, oh, well, maybe not a lot, but the ones I've seen, are trans people normally always have some kind of past like that. They either have really weird parents, they have an abusive past, they were bullied, they were they look different, they were shorter than others, they were smaller than others, weaker than others. It normally has something to do with that. It normally just doesn't come out of the blue. It's not like I wake, most of them wake up one day and like, oh, I want to be trans. Uh, now, some of them, like I said, struggle with uh, gender dysphoria, but also that comes from some kind of past in some way. And that rarely ever gets mentioned. I just wanted to throw that out there. I'm going to say this, too. There's going to be a part in this video where it's going to seem like the video messed up. I mean, it is such a weird transition. I'm not even going to lie to y'all. It is a weird transition. It confused me. But know that that is not part of me doing that. And that is not it's not the video messing up. It is the actual video. For some reason, he decided to transition that one. Well, this is a woman, but transition this video. Okay, so let's get to it. Trans man. When that's all you want. It's all you want is to fit in. I mean, at 42, I was told I could fit in, and I was just unable to push that away. Let's read this record. Trans individuals are about three to six times more likely to be autistic than non-transgender people. Uh, research showed that the connection between transgenderism, transgenderism and autism have been subject uh, subject of interest for researchers since at, uh, since at least 2010. In the Gender Developed Identity Service at Tavistock, the world's largest pediatric gender clinic, came under fire in recent years over allegations that as many as 97.5% of gender patients had autism. 
Dr. Susan Bradley, a Canadian psychiatrist and pioneer in treating gender dysphoria, told DCNF, which is the, I don't know what that is actually, <laughs> uh, that she now believes most pediatric gender patients are actually on the autism spectrum and are being exploited by medical professionals. Ugh. So being autistic means that your social interaction doesn't quite match everybody else. And so it's not that these autistic kids are, are not intelligent. The problem is, is that they're too intelligent on, on some levels. I mean, take a look at any scientific advancement, anything that has ever happened in the last, you know, 400 years. I want to say that too. Like, I work with autistic people. People think autistic means stupid or autistic means off. No, autism has such a big spectrum. There are people who are autistic that they cannot function in society. Okay, and there is functional autistic people. As you can see that list of people, I'm not sure all of them are autistic, but nonetheless, autism is not, I mean, I swear you could get a group of a thousand people. A lot of those people are probably somewhere on the autistic spectrum, somewhere. Autism is a big spectrum. It is so large. I know children that I've worked with. Y'all know I've worked with special ed kids, especially ed adults. Um, and I've met them who are autistic, right? And a lot of them are so bright. I know one kid, right, who's autistic. He just he just seems a little different, a little off. But it's not like his whole life is why he's just an idiot. He's one of the best readers in the class. I mean, not even close. I mean, by far, this kid is young, young. I'm talking to the kid is anywhere. This kid is around six to nine, right? And this kid has a vocabulary of an eighth grader. An eighth grader, and this kid is six to nine years old and has the capacity to read the same thing eighth graders do, and he's autistic, and he's normal functioning. The only thing he struggles with is his emotion, but he's also a child. So it's not like when you think autistic, you think idiot. It's just not like that. I think that's what people think. Like Somebody says, oh, I'm autistic, that means they're way over here. No, somebody can say I'm autistic, and they're like way over here on this side of the spectrum. It just means they struggle in certain areas. They may be very weak in certain areas, but extremely strong in other areas. It's just how it goes. To the majority of it being autistic people, they don't think the way that we do. So being autistic from 11 you know, to, to 18 is, is pretty significantly kind of you know bright, red lights and sirens that I don't fit. So being transgender or saying that you're born in the wrong body, what happens is, is that everybody in your school, all the doctors, everybody, everybody's afraid to say everything. So you say that you're transgender and all of a sudden you get to fit in with all the cool kids. Not only do you get to fit in, you get high fives down the, the hallway, you know, high five. Yeah, you're transgender, exactly. your authentic self. And so this is kind of pulled inside of you. And once somebody tells you that you can fit in and you never have it's not something that you want to get rid of that's what i that's what we always say when i talk about this group the biggest thing especially when it comes to the children and even adults people who feel left out want to fit in somewhere this group will make you fit in the only problem with this group is when you decide to try to leave they will eat you they eat their own if you come out and detransition or come out and say you know what i don't think i'm gay they start biting you apart. They start ripping you to shreds. That's the problem. They're, they welcome you. They are wolves in sheep clothing. That is the easiest way to explain it. They will let you in like, yeah, come in. Join our group. Join our group. All right. Now we might do these things to kids. Whoa, 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 whoa. whoa. I don't know if I want to do things to kids. Just start biting you up. They go from, they go from nice to cool collective to... What did you say? You say you don't want to join our group? You will join our group. You will do exactly what we tell you to do. And if you don't, we will find you. We will hunt you. We will come after you. You listen to everything we say. And don't you dare go against us. We are the kings and queens of this world now. And if you try to escape, 
you want to escape with your life. LGBT for life. That's just... Man, that's just how it goes, honestly. I didn't want to get rid of it at 42. Now, these kids, they are holding on to this with, with dear, 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 dear life. So the reason why autistic kids, one in 36, consider themselves transgender is because basically they think it'll make them fit. Now, let's go to the second reason why there's a push to add the A to the LGBTQ+. Um, really, really simply, in 2015, the gay community, my community, we won all the rights that we were after. We were after same-sex marriage. We were after, uh, you know, not being kicked out of where we lived, uh, not losing our jobs. And these are what I call righteous rights, which are the rights of every human being, regardless of how you feel about homosexuality, is fine to me. It's okay for us to disagree. Totally, completely uh, disagree. Quite frankly, I understand with how we've let the entirety of society down. Uh, by not standing up for kids for that, I apologize. But in 2015, we won all those rights, and something happened. And to give you kind of an analogy, in 2005, or excuse me, 2015, Stonewall in the UK. Meet free speech warrior Scott Nugent. Enormous amount of money. Stonewall was about to sign bankruptcy papers. In 2015, they were they were on their way out, right? The next year, they had a 32 percent year over year. Now, I've been in business, and in my country, if you have a 32 percent year over year, you you have the government knocking going, "What's going on? You're doing something illegal." And the only thing that they did different that year was to sign on with mermaids. They won everything. All the what I call righteous gays and. So that was the weird transition, by the way. Like it, it just comes out in left field lesbians and trans we all went home to kind of raise our kids but they never finished that paperwork and that paperwork resulted in the next year with a 36 percent year over year growth now that growth happened and there's only one thing that the stonewall organization did the lgbtq of the uk they signed with an organization called mermaids now all right let's read that mermaids supports transgender non-binary and gender diverse Gender and Young People, which is the acronym we talked about earlier, until their 20th birthday, as well as their families and professionals involved in their care. Transgender, non-binary, and gender diverse children and teens need support and understanding, as well as the freedom to explore their gender identity. Whatever the outcome, Mermaids um, is committed to helping families navigate the challenges they may face, which I'm assuming, and I watched this video already, but I kind of... I was listening in, but I, what, from what I can gather, what Mermaids does is they're kind of the ones who give all these things out to help kids transition. That's what I'm getting out of it. So they were able to make money off that because parents were paying them to get certain uh, medications to help maybe like puberty blockers and stuff like that to help their kids transition or keep them from going through puberty. And that costs money. And so with that being done, that way this company partnering with mermaid they were able to make a profit because there's so much money in transitioning children now mermaid's sole purpose is to medicalize children to medically transition children now okay, they're right. the ones that came up with the gingerbread uh you know the gingerbread man you could be trans if you know you're a boy and like pink or you're a girl and likes blue all that crap um so the, the gingerbread person I heard this. I was listening to this in the background, so I wasn't seeing the video. Identity is how you in your head experience and defend, uh, define gender based on how much you align and don't align with what you understand the opposition for your gender to be. Attraction is how you find yourself feeling down for, or not drawn to some people in sexual, romantic, and other ways often categorized within genders. Sex is the physic, physical trace you were born with or developed that we think of as our sex characteristics, as well as the sex you were assigned with birth. In expression is how you present gender through your actions, uh, clothing, and demeanor to name to name a few, and how those pr uh, presentations are viewed based on social expectations. Well, that's really small. The first thing that we have to have to kind of recognize is the fact that that 
<laughs> transgenderism is a huge, huge moneymaker. So let's look at the second reason why the A was added on to the LGBTQ+. Currently in the United States, we have 299,000 children who consider themselves uh, transgender, who consider themselves born in the wrong body, that consider uh, they need to be medically transitioned to be their own. Now this part is going to be astonishing. I was shocked when I heard this. Look, I know there was money in this stuff, but this is good to hear it for somebody who's actually been through it. This person has transitioned and so they can give more facts and how much money it is. It is going to blow your mind, friend. Authentic self. Now, if we take a look at the whole, um, and that's just, that's actually just 13 to 17, that uh, 299,000, 13 to 17, Williams Institute, there's a whole lot more of that underneath that, but you know what, Let, let's undershoot, because even undershooting these numbers will really kind of leave you floored with that. So, uh, 300,000 kids here in the United States, 13 to 17, consider themselves, uh, you know, transition, transgender and in need of medical transition. So, what does that mean with autistic, if we can add more autistic people to that uh, spectrum? So, 7.3 million children in the United States, just here in the United States. Now, that throws up 202,000 more children that we can get on the idea that they are born in the wrong body. And what does that mean fiscally? Well, hold on just a second. If we take just, just the autistic kids, just the autistic kids, that 36% uh, of, of, of the kids, or 30, one out of 36, and we take those numbers, and we tie that just to puberty, 36% of... Okay, so this is showing how much it costs. This says a, some kind of implant. I don't know what that word is. Insertion drug implant device in United States health care payments and adjustments. So this, uh, wow. So what it shows is $12,000 for this first part, $608. And that comes out to, it says $18,206.47. And it shows this person has already made payments of $7,000, leaving their account balance at $4,695.45. So the entire procedure, I guess just the beginning, was $18,000. Of, of the kids or 30, one out of 36 and we take those numbers and we tie that just to puberty blockers we don't add synthetic hormones for life we don't add uh you know we don't add plastic surgery we don't add complications and lord knows there are i mean i'm up to a million dollars in in complications for my medical transition but if we take a low end on the low end oh my gosh oh that's a uh okay yeah 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 We'll keep it going. I'll um, explain what that is. If we take puberty blockers. So if you rewind and look back at it, that was a penis. That was a fake penis. Right? You can go back and look at that again. But it says $907,000. I wish I could. Y'all go back and look at it. Okay? But nonetheless, man, that was a botched penis um, from what I could tell. I've seen the surgeries before, and that's what it looked like to me. Could be wrong on that, but $907,000? That's crazy. Let me look at that. The transhuman top surgery. Yeah, that's crazy. All right, let's move it. But if we take a low end, on the low end, um, if we take puberty blockers, which is about $37,000 on the low end, on the high end, it's about $95,000 for children to be on puberty blockers. Um, you know, there's usually a middle road in that, but let, let's take just, just the low end with this. And keep in mind that puberty blockers are eight times more profitable when they're prescribed to children and not to adults. Why? It's a black box. Um, it's a black box. Drugs. I'll, I'll do another video on that. It's really a dangerous drug. It, it truly is. So if we take the low end, $37,400 per child a year on a four-year stretch, which means that usually puberty blockers are given about four years on, on these children that, that think that they're medically transitioned. So in the end, if we take 30 per, uh, 36% of those 2002, uh, we take that over a four-year profit. That ends with about $800 million. On the high end, we're looking at about $77 trillion.
on the high end. And let's say it's somewhere in between 800 million and 77 trillion dollars. I mean, just in the middle somewhere, we'll just say it, just call it a trillion dollars. And we know when we say the low end, we know more than likely they're going to push toward that medium in the middle. They know people can't afford the high end. It's just like marketing, guys. When they when some people market to you, they market three different things, the low end, the middle and the high end. They know most people won't go for the high, but most people won't go for the low. Most people will go for the middle because they'll be like, I don't want the best, but I don't want the worst. So it'll go for the middle. So, yeah, let's put that somewhere in the somewhere in the middle. And let's just call it a trillion dollars. I mean, 77 trillion dollars is crazy. But guys, there's just so much money in this stuff for children that you that's why we fight so hard for the kids, because y'all understand y'all think it's for love. Y'all think it's for, oh, we just got to help these kids. No, it's for money. Follow the money and you will find out the real source of most people's intentions. It's not about helping children take their lives because we know that children after surgery are 19 times more likely to take their lives. They become more. Um, Y'all know what the S word. Y'all know what I want to say. OK, let's just so just keep that in mind. It ain't about helping nobody. It's about money. Dollars. Now, this is money that's up for grabs. So love and tolerance has nothing to do with medically transitioning kids. It is all about money. And the truth does not make anybody money. And here's the truth. Medical transition is cosmetic surgery. We deserve respect and dignity for the choices that we make, just like anybody does that wants to get a breast augmentation or a nose job or a facelift or Botox or color their hair. We've been doing that for centuries. And the truth is, is that, you know, us as human beings, it would be great if we could just get to the point where we just kind of love who we are, where we are at the time of where we are. But it hasn't happened yet. Makeup and, and changing our looks has, has been since the beginning of time. But calling it what it is, cosmetic surgery, what it does is it takes away an enormous amount of funds. It takes a huge pocket of money that is surrounded by what I call unicorn farts and glitter bombs. Everybody believes it's about love and tolerance. It's not. And the truth is, at the end of it, there's only seven studies that say that medically transitioning children is beneficial. Every single one of them has either been retracted with, oops, we're sorry, doesn't help anything, or not enough time, not enough participants to say whether it's beneficial. I like that part. Oops, we're sorry. That's the problem, man, is when you decide you want to do this whole transition thing, you turn 18 or whatever, all they're going to say is, oops. <laughs> it's like that's, that's all they get. Oops. Why didn't you have a real conversation with them to begin with? Instead of going ahead and transitioning them and think, you know what? What could go wrong? Why don't we ever ask that question? It's always, well, what's the slim, 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 slimmy, slim, 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 slim? What is the small chance that this could be successful and you'll be happier than ever? They rather go off the small chance that you're going to love your transition and you're going to be the happiest person on the planet instead of going with the most likely thing is you're going to regret the transition and it didn't help your mental health at all. They keep pushing towards the low end. Why do they do that, guys? Man, I used to not be this guy, you know, and I had to quit being naive. These big, these companies, they really do want money. I used to really truly believe that. No, they're always trying to help. They give you these pills and everything because they want to help you. It's the only way. I am now not of that belief. A lot of the medication that they give out outside of transitioning, medication that they give for all these other different stuff that they tell you I have and you have, it's all to get that money, 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 money. <laughs> it's all it's about, man. It's really just about making as much money as possible. And it's really just become a sick, sick practice. And people are so mad at us for not wanting to do this for the kids. But like I said, I think most people are starting to come to their senses. I'm just glad more people even talking about it. I'd rather have, I honestly, I'd rather people have to pick a side. I don't like people who sit in the middle. No, you can't just sit there and say, I don't really care. No, you're going to have to pick a side eventually. It's going to come a day, right? And more people are having to choose to decide. It's either you want them to do this to kids or you don't. Because your vote's going to matter when these votes come up. So do you care or don't you? That's it. There ain't no in-between. Because the in-between will have kids taking medications and will leave you millions of dollars in debt. And you'll never be able to pay that back. So you better make a decision now. 
Because when they start coming, knocking on your door and saying, hey, Billy said he wants to be Susan. Um, how do you feel about that? And if you say, I don't care, <laughs> it's over. It's over. They're going to make you pick a side. So you might as well just go ahead and get off your butt. Stand up for something. Either side. Okay? You better figure it out. Or not been. But there's one long-term study that has always stood the test of time, and it always will. It had 326 medically transitioned people. They followed from 1973 to 2003. And what they found was something that's surprising that the mainstream media is not telling us, which is that um, suicidal ideation, being suicidal, the odds of uh, these people killing themselves, you know, transgender people killing themselves, is not before you medically transition. It's seven to ten years after. And the reason why is you're told you're different, you're told you can fit in, and there's such a long step. When I start cross-sex hormones, I'll feel better. When I start puberty blocker, I'll feel better. When I get the surgery, I'll feel better. And then once you get to the end, you realize it doesn't help anything and that you fit less. So you can sit back and just bow your head or you can get up and fight. And I've decided to get up and fight. If you think my voice matters, please consider going to scottnugent.com, making a donation, forwarding this video, doing whatever you need, but help me scream louder because these kids, they're not doing well. And now they're after autistic kids. Scream louder. Hmm. Love that ending. Uh, yeah, so there is the video, guys. Let me know what you think about it. Once again, like I said, man, you just got to end up standing for something. And they're going to keep going after our kids, man. And I just... I feel so sorry for the kids because the people are trying so hard to get the parents out of it. They are literally, and we'll talk about this if it gets approved. I haven't talked about it yet because it's not really, it's just more talks. It's been approved. But in Michigan, they are passing a bill. There are some nuances to it, but some of it is, you know, if you misgender a person, it's possible that you could go to jail for five years. Not just saying, not just simply misgendering somebody. It simply means as if you misgender somebody and it gets found out that it was done out of harassment or they can say it was harassment. If it can be proven that you misgendering somebody was caused as harassment or can be caused as bullying or something like that, it can be pushed to up to five years in prison no more than five years or no more than a $10,000 fine. The problem with that is it's not that if I come out and say, oh, he, oh, I'm in jail. It's just that if I say it and I decide to stand on my principles and I refuse to say it, I can go to court. Now, this hasn't been approved in Michigan, but it has been passed. So we're now waiting for it to see if it gets approved for consideration. And if it does, the person, I think the governor, governor, whatever you call it, the governor of Michigan already said that she will sign it. And that will, what that will do in Michigan is pretty much shut up any conservative in that state. Because if a conservative comes out and says he, and he, he that person, that conservative decides to stand on that, their morals and stand on their principles and decides I'm not going to call you that, no matter how much you tell me, they can go to court and they can be sued and be found guilty and be going to prison. I just don't think that's right. That's just a way to censor us more and more. And the more that they can censor us in some form or fashion, the more they're going to start going for the children. That's what I'm telling y'all. Anyway, let me know what y'all think in the comment section down below. I'm out of here. Peace.